Harold and the Purple Crayon by Crockett Johnson. One evening, after thinking it over for some time, Harold decided to go for a walk in the moonlight. There wasn't any moon, and Harold needed a moon for a walk in the moonlight, and he needed something to walk on. He made a long straight path so he wouldn't get lost, and he set off on his walk, taking his big purple crayon with him. But he didn't seem to be getting anywhere on the long straight path, so he left the path for a shortcut across a field, and the moon went with him. The shortcut led right to where Harold thought a forest ought to be. He didn't want to get lost in the woods, so he made a very small forest with just one tree in it. It turned out to be an apple tree. The apples would be very tasty, Harold thought, when they got red. So he put a frightening dragon under the tree to guard the apples. It was a terribly frightening dragon. It even frightened Harold. He backed away. Um, let's see. His hand holding the purple crayon shook. Suddenly, he realized what was happening, but by then Harold was over his head in an ocean. He came up thinking fast, and in no time he was climbing aboard a trim little boat. He quickly set sail, and the moon sailed along with him. After he had sailed long enough. Harold made land without much trouble. He stepped ashore on a beach, wondering where he was. The sandy beach reminded Harold of picnics, and the thought of picnics made him hungry. So he laid out a nice, simple picnic lunch. There was nothing but pie, but there were all nine kinds of pie that Harold liked best. When Harold finished his picnic, there was quite a lot left. He hated to see so much delicious pie go to waste. So Harold left a very hungry moose and a deserving porcupine to finish it up, and off he went, looking for a hill to climb to see where he was. Harold knew that the higher up he went, the farther he could see. So he decided to make the hill into a mountain. If he went high enough, he thought he could see the window of his bedroom. He was tired, and he felt he ought to be getting to bed. He hoped he could see his bedroom window from the top of the mountain. But as he looked down over the other side, he slipped, and there wasn't any other side of the mountain. He was falling in thin air, but luckily he kept his wits and his purple crayon. He made a balloon and he grabbed onto it, and he made a basket under the balloon big enough to stand in. He had a fine view from the balloon, but he couldn't see his window. He couldn't even see a house. So he made a house with windows, and he landed the balloon on the grass in the front yard. None of the windows was his window. He tried to think where his window ought to be. He made some more windows. He made a big building full of windows. He made lots of buildings full of windows. He made a whole city full of windows. But none of the windows was his window. He couldn't think where it might be. 
he decided to ask a policeman. The policeman pointed the way Harold was going anyway, but Harold thanked him. And he walked along with the moon, wishing he was in his room and in bed. Then suddenly Harold remembered. He remembered where his bedroom window was when there was a moon. It was always right around the moon. And then Harold made his bed. He got in it and he drew up the covers. The purple crown dropped on the floor and Harold dropped off to sleep. Okay, so now I have read the book Harold and the Purple Crayon. And can all of you see my screen? Nod your head or give a thumbs up. Okay, it seems like everyone can see my screen. So now let's start with some warm up questions. So for Harold, he liked to go out and walk in the evening. Um, what is your favorite time of day to go for a walk? You can raise your hand if you want to answer this question. Um, Matthew, so there are two Matthews, so I'll ask to unmute the one I'm calling. Like hollow, the evening. You like to walk in the evening also? Yes. Okay. And why do you like to walk in the evening? Because I eat a lot of things. I, I, can, I can move a lot. Yes, that is a really complete answer. Thank you for sharing. And what do you like f to have for a picnic lunch? Does anyone want to answer this question? Um, Matthew Young? Chocolate pancake. You like to eat chocolate pancakes for a picnic lunch. Do you have any other things you would like to eat for a picnic lunch? Matthew Young, do you have any other thing you like to eat for a picnic lunch or no? Juice. Juice, okay. A really good answer. And does anyone have a favorite kind of pie they would like to share? Ted? I like pineapple pie. Apple pie. Apple pie is also my favorite. And have you ever been lost? And how did it feel? Did it feel scary or did it feel really terrifying? Um, I feel scary. You've been lost before, Ted? Yes. Okay, so it felt really scary. Did, did it feel anything else? Um, I'm nervous. Oh, nervous. When I get lost, I think it's really scary and I also feel really nervous. Now, in Harold and the Purple Crayon, we read the book. We saw a lot of vocabulary words. So I will be talking about their definition and introducing them. So straight means extending in one direction without a curve or a bend. Frightening means really terrifying or really scary. Guard means to watch over in order to protect or to control. Ashore means to or on the shore from the direction of the sea. 
Deserving means worthy of being treated in a certain way. Wit means intelligence. And yard me is a measurement, but in the story, it is used as a small, usually walled place near a building. Now let's look at some phrases we can find in the book. These phrases we can learn and then we can use them to make our writing pieces more professional and we can use them to improve our writing skills. Set off means to begin a journey and it usually means to begin a journey on land. Came up means to be above. Set sail means to begin a voyage and when you think of sail, you think of the ocean or water. So whenever someone says set sail, it usually means to begin a voyage on water. Remind of means to remember something. Lay out means to spread something out to its full size. Finish up means to complete an action or a process. Drop off means to fall asleep easily. Now let's take a look at the story. First, let's take a look at some high-level information. So in this story, what is the boy's name? Uh, Matthew? Carol. Matthew? Um, so the other Matthew, do you agree with Matthew Young? Yes. Okay, so the boy's name is Harold. That is correct. And what time of day does Harold decide to go for a walk? Um, Sherry, do you want to try? Sherry, can you speak louder? At night. At night. That is a correct answer. Harold decides to go for a walk at night. And what does Harold bring with him on his walk? Ted, do you want to try? Yes. <clears throat> a purple crayon. That is correct. Harold decides to bring with him a purple crayon on his walk. And last, why does Harold draw a long straight path at the beginning? Matthew? To keep, to keep him from being Be lost. Because, because, because the long straight path let the hollow, hollow don't get lost. Okay, both Matthews answered correctly. Great job. So moving on, let's continue to look at the story, but this time let's look at some detailed information. So how many trees do you think, how many trees are in Harold's forest? Ted? Just one tree. Okay, that is a really good answer, and that is correct. There were only one tree in Harold's forest. And why does Harold's hand shake? And what happens when his hand does shake? Does anyone want to try? Sherry, do you want to try? No? Um, Ted, would you like to try? No. Matthew? Um, because the dra dragon frightened Harold. Harold, yes. The dragon frightened Harold. And what happens when his hand shakes? His hand shakes, then, then the hand shakes and he made an ocean. Okay, 
Yes, that is correct. Great job. Nice. So his hand makes an ocean. Then how does Harold save himself from the ocean? Ted? He makes a boat. Nice. It's great. He makes a boat. And what is Harold hoping to see when he climbs the mountain? Um, Matthew, why? Uh, his own window. His, 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 his bedroom window. Good job. So he is hoping to see his bedroom win window. And last, what does Harold draw to save himself when he is falling? Sherry, do you want to try? Blue. A balloon. Yes, correct, great job. He draws a balloon to help him. Now let's look at the story again. So the story is about a young boy who is Harold, and he decides to go on a journey with his purple crown that night. And we can organize the story by listing the character setting and plot. The character is the main person in a story, play, or movie. So for this story, the character is a young boy, and he is Harold. And we can try to list some adjectives, which are words to describe something, to describe Harold. Harold is curious, imaginative, artistic, kind, generous, intelligent, calm, and polite. And he shows these character traits throughout the story. For instance, he is generous because he gave the leftover pie to a hungry moose and a deserving porcupine. This shows that he is really generous. So next, let's look at the setting. The setting is where a story takes place. And in this story, the setting mainly takes place at night. And the setting actually constantly changes throughout the story because Harold draws his world and every while he draws something different. So Harold travels along a road, across a field, through a forest, across an ocean, on a beach, up a mountain, through the air, in someone's front yard, in a city, and finally back home to his own bedroom. As you can see, Harold, in the book Harold in the Purple Crayon, the setting is changing constantly. In other books, the setting is a fixed setting, which means it does not change. Last, let's look at the plot. The plot is important events in a story. And in this story, some important events is that Harold uses a purple crayon and draws his own world and goes on an adventure to search for his bedroom window. This is a summary of the book Harold and the Purple Crayon. Now I want to introduce a really good thing to use to organize when you are reading a book. This is called a story mountain and the story mountain includes the exposition, rising action, climax, falling action, resu and resolution. So the exposition is when the story starts and begins. And in the exposition, the characters and settings are introduced. After the exposition, there's the rising action. The rising action is where the plot is slowly developed and is where a problem starts to become clear and a conflict arises. The climax is when the problem reaches its highest point 
and there is great suspense and a lot of action in the story. The following action is basically when the action begins to slow down and decrease and the problem is being sorted out and there is less action. And last, there is the resolution. The resolution is when the problem is finally solved and there's a solution to the problem and there is an ending for the story. And the story is wrapped up and there is a conclusion. So now let's use this organizer, Story Mountain, to organize the book, Harold and the Purple Crayon. So for the exposition or beginning, does anyone want to tell us what the exposition of Harold and the Purple Crayon is? Exposition is where Harold and the Purple Crayon and the setting are introduced. Matthew Huang. The beginning is is how to draw a line, a long line that he wouldn't get lost and, and he needed something to walk on and he left a long straight uh, path to, 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 to a field. Great, that is exactly the answer I'm looking for. So the exposition is where Harold wanted to have a walk and he needs something to walk on so he drew a straight line and you answered really perfectly. So in the exposition of Harold and the Purple Crayon, we can see that Harold, the main character, is introduced, but the, and the setting is also introduced. So now there's the rising action. The rising action is where the problem starts to come, and there's more of a plot to the story. So does anyone want to tell us what the rising action of Harold and the Purple Crayon might be? Matthew, why? The field led to a wood and the woods had, and he didn't want to get lost. So the woods had only one tree and it was an apple tree and he put a frightening dragon beside the tree to guard the apples. Very good. That is the rising action. Mm -hmm. So the rising action is when Harold continued to draw and he went across a field, through a forest, across an ocean, then he stepped on shore on the beach and he began looking for his bedroom window. Matthew's answer was a really great answer. So now the climax is where there is a change and the problem is really clear and there is a lot of action. So this is kind of tricky. Does anyone want to try and guess the climax of the story? Ted, do you want to try? Mm. He draw a mountain and climb on the mountain and he fell off the mountain and he draw a balloon to and a basket to sit in. Very good. You touched but he still can't see her bedroom window. Very good. You touched the main key points of the climax. So the climax was he wanted to search for his bedroom window, like you said, and he drew a mountain. And he went to the top to find his bedroom window. But as he looked down the other side, he slipped. Now is the falling action. The falling action is where the problem starts to have a solution to it and there is less action. Sherry, do you want to try this one?
you know? Well, you can try to guess. So the following action is where Harold started to draw some buildings. So would you like to guess? Would you like someone else to help you out? Yes, okay. Matthew Huang, I saw you raise your hand. Would you like to help Sherry out? The, the pup, he, he made a bloom and, and, made, and made a basket under it enough to stand Stand in, but but he still couldn't see his bedroom window. He couldn't even see a house. Very good. And is there anything else to the following action? Not much else. Okay, so the answer you gave was pretty complete, and it was a good answer. So he made a balloon and safely landed in the grass in a front yard and he continued to look for his bedroom window. And last, there is the resolution, the conclusion of the story. So for this, Sherry, would you like to try this one? The conclusion is where the story basically ends. So you can just talk about the ending of the story. His bed. Very good. And is there anything else to the resolution? What you said was really great. He find his window. He find his window. Good job. So in the resolution. He walked along with the moon and he remembered where his bedroom window was when there was a moon. So he drew the window and he drew his bed and he fell asleep. Everyone did a great job trying to organize the story Harold in the Purple Crown. Harold in the Purple Crown, the story is slightly hard and trickier to organize than some other stories. So everyone did really great. Now I like to talk about from the story to narrative writing. So from this story, we can learn some things that might help us when we are writing. So in the story, there's the introduction. The introduction is where who, what, when, where, and why are introduced. And these are introduced. So in your writing, you can also introduce where, who, when, why, when you are writing. And in the middle of the story, there's the body. And the body is about what? Like events that happen throughout the story and the problem and the solution. So when you are writing, you can also do that and you can write the problem and the climax and finally the solution and the body part. Now there's the conclusion. The conclusion finishes the story with the resolution of the climatic problem. The climatic problem is just the problem. So it concludes the story and it has a solution for the problem. Now, when you are writing, you can also use this in the end of your writing. You can conclude everything and you can write a wrap up and and that can help the reader know that is the end of your story. So now I have a little activity for all of you. So for this activity, you, you can read this page. And, but as he looked down over the other side, he slipped. And there wasn't any other side of the mountain. He was falling in thin air. 
So right now, Harold is falling over the mountain. And can you save Harold? So you can draw your solution and you can show and tell. So you can go ahead and grab uh, something to draw with and a piece of paper. Or you can just think of a solution if you want. And when you are done drawing, you can raise your hand and you can share your solution for us. Did anyone finish their drawing? Or does anyone have an idea? Matthew, why? Do you want to tell us your idea to save Harold? A trampoline under him. That is a really imaginative um, solution to save Harold. And why would you put a trampoline? That way he can jump back to the mountain. Okay, that is really creative. Does anyone else want to share their solution? Matthew Huang? I see your picture. Can you t tell us about it? He fell down on, on the, the soft bed and he walked walk down the, the bed stairs. That is a really great drawing. You draw really well. So your idea and solution for Harold is to draw a soft bed and for Harold to land on the bed softly, right? Okay, that is also really creative. Now, Sherry, I saw you, I saw your paper. So, is that your idea? Yes. Do you want to talk about it? Uh, he draws. Harold draws. Harold draws a big bird. And Harold lands on the bird and flies. Yes. That was what I was also thinking. So your solution is really creative. And I really enjoyed all your solutions for it to save Harold. So now I want to summarize what we learned today. So we learned a lot, but Mainly, we focused on 
the book Harold and the Purple Crown, and we learned about the story, the character, the setting, the plot, and we also learned about the story mountain. Does anyone remember what a story mountain includes? Matthew, why do you want to try? Do you remember what a story mountain includes? You can just say one of them. The climax. The climax. Very good. The story mountain includes the climax. Does anyone else want to tell me what the story mountain includes? Ted, do you want to try? Uh, resolution. Good job. There is also the resolution or the conclusion of the story. Sherry, do you want to try? No? Do you remember what the beginning of the story is called in a story mountain? No? Okay, it is fine. And Matthew Huang, do you want to try? I have a question. Okay, you can ask. No, I have a comment, I mean. Why? You can't. My, my battery is low, it is 10. Okay, we will end in just a few minutes. So don't worry. Um, a story mountain includes exposition, the introduction, and there's the rising action where the problem starts to become clear. There's the climax, as Matthew said. Um, there's the falling action where there's less action and there is a solution. And there is also the resolution, just like what Ted said. So that is all that is all we learned today and I hope you enjoyed and I hope you attend my next lesson